Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Bob Kimball, and I'd like to welcome you to Salem Church as we celebrate Christmas in July. And as you saw in our warm-up slides, we begin with considering the words of Calvin Coolidge. Christmas is not a time nor a season, but a state of mind. To cherish peace and goodwill, to be plenteous in mercy, is to have the real spirit of Christmas. We invite you to celebrate God's gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ, with us today. We will worship with Christmas music led by our music director, Dr. Allison Moore. There will be... of the promise in Jesus' birth. And our liturgist today is Judy Jones. So open your hearts to the true and Holy Spirit of Christmas. The message of Christmas is timeless. We begin today with our handbells, who will be doing their rendition of sing, maybe I should say ring, we now of Christmas. And here's our handbell choir. The grace of God appeared bringing salvation to all. We offer our worship in thanksgiving for the gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please join me in the opening prayer. O oh, Almighty God, by the birth of your holy child, Jesus, you gave us great light to dawn on our darkness. Grant that in his light we may see light. Give to us your most excellent Christmas gift to all people, so that the likeness of your Son may be formed in us, and that we may have the ever-brightening hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I want to invite you to join us as we sing some wonderful, beloved Christmas carols. Um, great hymns of faith. So let's start this morning with O Come All Ye Faithful, verses 1 and 3. If you want to read it out of your red hymnals, you certainly can. It's page 234. Let's sing together. <laughs>
feel like I should say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas in July to everyone. Good morning and a special welcome for all of us worshiping together. And we want to particularly reach out to our children and young people. We're so glad that you are with us in worship. Today is July the 25th, not December the 25th, but we are celebrating Christmas in July. If you think about it, we can celebrate Christmas any day. It doesn't matter what the date is because Christmas is the celebration of the gift of our Savior, Jesus Christ. On our worship uh, altar this morning, we have a big present and it is wrapped in beautiful red paper and a gorgeous white and gold bow. This wrapped present reminds us of our true gift. Jesus is our gift, the most important gift of all. God loved us so much that he gave us his son Jesus to live with us on earth as a human person. Also on our altar is a small nativity scene with just Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus. You can see it in the picture. But we still have our dove reminding us of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a part of Jesus' birth as well. Christmas is when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And I want us to think for a minute about the word Christmas. It means Christ's mass. Mass meaning a church service. So Christmas is indeed a church service, but a celebration of Jesus Christ. We can have some fun celebrating Christmas, especially at a different time of year but it helps us to remember what is most important about Christmas, and that is Jesus. I hope we all enjoy singing some Christmas carols and looking at the Christmas decorations. But most of all, I hope that we all will join in saying thank you to God for the best gift of all, the gift of Jesus, our Savior and our friend. For those of us worshiping in the sanctuary, uh, we have some little Christmas books intended for children. They're out in the table in the narthex. You're welcome to pick them up and share them with the young people in your life, or you can read it yourself. We won't tell uh, that you're reading a, uh, something designed for children. But just to remind us of this timeless message the gift of our Savior, Jesus. Let us join together in prayer. Dear God, we are full of joy thinking about the gift of Jesus. We thank you for our Savior. Help us, each one, to receive Jesus in our hearts. We give you all thanks and praise. Bless our church family, and especially bless our children and our young people. May we share your love freely with one another and with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hearing that beautiful music, I feel really transported to Christmas Eve. So thank you, Allison, and to the choir. Today is July the 25th, and it will be five months until we have the traditional celebration of Christmas. And um, I know that there are folks who are already counting down the days. But as people of faith, we know that it is important to celebrate Jesus. 
all the time. And I think it's important for us every once in a while to reflect on Christmas and its meaning at a time other than December 24th or 25th. So I invite us really to meditate on the timeless message of Christmas through scripture, through song, spoken word, and we're also going to be lighting some candles. I invite you to open your hearts and your minds and your lives to receive the gift of Jesus, our Savior, as we celebrate in the spirit of Christmas. Christmas calls us to focus on what is most important, and that is God's relationship with us, a relationship based in unconditional grace and motivated totally by love. God's grace and love for us. We celebrate God's great gift to us and to all the world, the gift of a savior. Generations before Jesus is born, God promises a savior to his people, Israel. The people spend years and years longing for the coming of this savior also known as the Messiah. And I believe that we need to remember and really recapture this longing for our Savior because it opens our hearts to receive the gift. It focuses our attention on God's actions because we're waiting for something that God is going to do. The question is not if God will save us, but when. We know that our Savior has come and opened the way for our salvation, and yet we are still longing for the completion of his kingdom. We long for the day that the kingdom which Jesus has ushered in with his birth, life, death, and resurrection will be fully realized. The kingdom of God is not fully realized on earth, as it is in heaven just yet. And so we continue to long and we continue to receive comfort from God's word of promise. I invite us now to listen to one of the biblical records of God's promise. This is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 11. And I'm going to ask Judy if she would read our scripture, please, at this time. This comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 to 9, from the Common English Bible. A shoot will grow up from the stump of Jesse. A branch will sprout from his roots. The Lord's spirit will rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of planning and strength, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He will delight in fearing the Lord. He won't judge by appearances, nor decide by hearsay. He will judge the needy with righteousness and decide with equity for those who suffer in the land. He will strike the violent with the rod of his mouth. By the breath of his lips, he will kill the wicked. Righteousness will be the belt around his hips and faithfulness the belt around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion will feed together and a little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze. Their young will, will lie down together, and a lion will eat straw like an ox. A nursing child will play over the, the snake's hole. Toddlers will reach right over the serpent's den. They won't, hurt, they won't harm or destroy anywhere on my holy mountain. The earth will surely be filled with the knowledge of the Lord just as the water covers the sea. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Today we're going to be lighting candles, similar to the way we light candles during the season of Advent. And Lacey has agreed to be our candle lighter, and I'm going to ask her to please light our first candle. This is our candle of promise. Friends, God is always faithful in keeping his promises. And we can place our complete confidence in that truth. We're going to be singing now, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. God sent his son, our savior, at a specific time in human history. It was a time when God's people are oppressed by the Roman government. We hear in the opening to the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke about a decree coming from Emperor Augustus. And we're used to hearing this detail from the scriptures. And I wonder if we stop and realize what this means for the Jewish people. They are once again oppressed by another people and they are sorely in need of liberation. They are suffering. And so their sense of longing for the savior is heightened by their political and economic reality. As we hear the story from the Gospel of Luke unfold, a young woman gives birth to her firstborn son. There is no place for this growing little family, so the mother lays her precious newborn child in a manger. In the darkness of night, a star shines bright brighter than any other star in all of history. And it is a symbol of the hope God is bringing to the people of Israel, a light in the darkness, a savior in their troubled world. I'd ask Lacey to please light our candle of hope as the choir prepares to share their special music with us. Don't you love to watch a baby sleeping? Or hold a sleeping child in your arms? 
Oh, how we wish that we had been the ones called by the angel to visit the newborn Savior in Bethlehem that night so long ago. Who received that honor, the first visitors, to see the baby? According to the Gospel of Luke, it is the lowly shepherds who are chosen. You might notice that this part of my message lifts up part of what Jerry said in his message last week. And if you heard that in our reading from Isaiah, it is true that it is often the most lowly that God lifts up. And so the shepherds were the least likely in their society to be given this great honor, this opportunity. And it reminds us just how much grace abounds with our God. The shepherds are doing their duty as usual. You might say they were pulling an all-nighter. But they're watching over the sheep entrusted to them. It's just another night of work for them. An ordinary night until an angel of the Lord appears to them. Now, this is significant. An angel, a messenger from God in heaven comes to them. And the angel first tells them, do not be afraid, which means they probably were afraid. An angel of the Lord speaks to them and says, to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Now the angel has to tell them what to look for because the savior has not come in the way that perhaps they would have expected. The angel tells them to look for a child wrapped in swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. To reinforce this angel's message, a multitude of the heavenly host joins this messenger. And together they praise God in saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This is hope for all the world. And so we light our candle of peace and sing together silent night, holy night.
Oh, what peace and what joy the shepherds experience as they go to Bethlehem to see what the angel had told them had taken place. Notice they do not hesitate. They don't sit around and debate with one another. Should we go? What should we do? Should we believe? Should we not? They go with haste. They don't want to miss this opportunity. And they go in faith. And the shepherds find everything exactly as God had told them it would be. They find Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And they recognize the sign. And it brings them great joy. The shepherds tell Mary and Joseph what the angel had told them. And they tell anyone who will listen to their story. And the reaction to the shepherd's story is amazement. But the shepherds remain focused on God and offering praise to their God for this amazing gift on this holy night. What is our reaction to God's gift of Jesus Christ? <coughs> Do we have unending joy the birth of Jesus. Jesus brings joy to us when we open our hearts to receive him as our savior. Joy to the world, a joy that is meant to be shared with everyone, everywhere around the world, at all times and in all places. The joy over the birth of Jesus goes well beyond the little family and the shepherds in the field. This holy birth brings worshipers from far away, the wise men who travel a great distance to kneel at the feet of the king. We light now our candle of joy we're having some technical difficulties with this candle. So, but we sing together, Joy to the World. Christmas story, or maybe each time you hear it and celebrate it, something speaks to you a little differently than ever before. And I want to draw our attention to think about Mary for a moment. The Gospel of Luke tells us how Mary responds to all that takes place after she gives birth. Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. We too need to ponder, to take time to ponder the birth of Jesus. Today gives us such an opportunity to recall the importance of the birth of Jesus Christ in our own lives. I think it's so easy for us to sometimes take for granted the birth of Jesus Christ and what God's gift means for us and for our world. 
So I would invite you to maybe take some time later today or in the coming days to ponder who is Jesus to you? I like to think about Jesus with the title Emmanuel, God with us. God comes to us from heaven and is born in human flesh. And God lives among us in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is God's presence in the world, in a human life, but in this form for a short time. For the last few weeks, we've been focusing on the Holy Spirit. And you'll notice that we've incorporated our decorations from the celebration of the Holy Spirit and Christmas together. And it's a great reminder for us that Jesus and the Holy Spirit are all persons of the Trinity along with God the Father. They are one, yet known to us in three different persons. But all three together are God. We speak of them separately really to help us as human beings to understand this mystery of who God is. But when we say our creeds, particularly the Apostles' Creed, there is a line that says, Jesus is conceived by the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit is present in Jesus Christ. And then when Jesus returns to heaven, the Holy Spirit continues to be the presence of God in the world and is still God's presence in our world today. So Jesus is a holy child, the son of God most high. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we respond with awe and wonder that God would choose to live among us as one of us. We celebrate the presence of Christ with us with us now and always. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. This good news continues to bring great joy for all of us who choose to receive it. And so we light the Christ candle, celebrating the presence of Christ in our world then, now, and always. And together we sing, What Child Is This? You can, you can take the
We opened worship with Bob sharing a quote from President Calvin Coolidge. I remarked that I thought it was interesting that the quote uh, was from him. And so I feel like I need to end with a quote from uh, a pastor. This is from J.I. Packer, who says, the Christmas spirit itself ought to be the mark of every Christian all year round. And so this is our true identity as followers of Christ. We are also to be the bearers of Christ in the world. Those who, by the grace of God, reveal the presence of Jesus Christ. This is the same spirit described in the prophecy of Isaiah, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of planning and strength, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, a spirit of peace and harmony, a spirit of liberation and salvation. May the spirit of Christ abide in us and among us now and always. Amen. I'd like to thank everyone who came out on Friday evening. It was a lot of fun. And for me, one of the great joys was hearing the children running around and giggling and laughing and our youth working together and all of us having fun. So thank you for your support uh, of our youth. The money that uh, we received in donations will go towards the various youth missions. So thank you for that. We want to express our sympathy to Carol and Jay and her family on the death of her uncle. And we pray for Carolyn's sister, Ellie, who is having hip surgery tomorrow. Amy and Paul have requested prayers for the Milat family. We continue to pray for Jessica's aunts. And I'd ask your prayers for a young boy, Garrett, who is battling cancer. I thought it most appropriate for us to be able to share one more Christmas. just very emotional for me. I will always think about Allison at Christmas. And you know that um, when I was in youth group with your brother-in-law, um, we sang a song, uh, friends are friends forever, if the Lord's the Lord of them. And friends never really say goodbye. And so Allison is always a part of our Salem church family. And we wish you well as you return to California. And we're so grateful. Who knew a year ago that we would have a bonus year <laughs> and then for you to be able to come and be with us in person. So we thank you for your dedication and your service. And we send you with our love and prayers, and we're going to have a reception following the service, so we have a chance to uh, wish you well. So thank you to Allison, and next Sunday we will welcome our new music director, Mr. Matthew Bunn, and we will have a reception to welcome him after the 10 o'clock service. So a lot of transition in a short period of time, and I'm so grateful for how God works um, on our behalf, and we are so grateful for this time. I would invite us to now join together in a time of prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, today we celebrate your gift of Jesus, our Savior. Help us to offer our praise at all times and in all places and not to take your precious gift for granted. You sent your son to be Emmanuel, 
your very presence with us. Fill us with the spirit of Christ. Give us compassion that we all might care for one another, especially those who are hurting, those in need, those who are most vulnerable. We pray and lift up the places in our country, our community and our world where there is suffering. We pray for the safety of all those involved with the Olympics and we pray for the success of the games. We think of those around the world impacted by violence and pray for your protection and your peace. We pray for those impacted by severe weather, flooding, wildfires, extreme heat. We pray for all those impacted by the pandemic. We give you thanks for all those who give of themselves in service to others. And we lift up and pray for all who are on the front lines, caring for others. In your great love, O oh God, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We lift up to you those who are in need of your healing power, those who are ill, those awaiting surgery or test results, those who are recovering and recuperating, those with ongoing concerns. Especially we name Millie, Karen's brother, Ray, Ralph, Rich, Carol's sister, Terry, Rocky's family, Bonnie, baby Miles, and his parents, Lydia and Roberto, Carolyn's sister, Ellie, Amy and Paul's friends, Jessica's aunts, for Garrett and others battling cancer. We pray, O oh God, for those who are unable to worship with us, we pray for all who are grieving the loss of loved ones, especially Carol J and her family. We pray for traveling mercies. We pray for all who serve our country and those who serve in our community. We thank you for Allison and ask that you would bless her as she returns to California. We are so grateful for all of the time she has shared with us and for how she has blessed us with her gifts. We pray for our new director of music and for our entire church staff as we move forward together in ministry with new opportunities as well as the foundation of our shared community. We praise you and thank you for our church family. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on your believers throughout the world. May we serve you faithfully and share freely and joyfully the good news of Jesus Christ. In the silence of our hearts, we offer our own petitions and praises. We thank you for the gift of prayer. We offer all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
join me in the closing hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain. <laughs> By his incarnation, Jesus Christ gathered into one things earthly and things heavenly. May Christ fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill. May we celebrate the gift of our Savior in the loving and joyful spirit of Christmas every day. May the God who breathes life into us be our delight. And may Jesus Christ fill us with hope and peace. And may the Holy Spirit be our guide today and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.